Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, you know, I'm kind of new to this, to this uh, South and Central American cichlid uh, scene. I'm my background is mostly with, with with these type of fish you see here, the the African cichlids. That's where most of my experience is. And so this this these South and Central American cichlids have been kind of a a new experience. And some things have have uh, have really surprised me. And I want to go ahead and share those with you in this video. So let's go ahead and get right into it. One point that kind of surprised me was the way these South and Central American fish dig. These uh, African cichlids, yeah, they'll they'll move sand, and certainly if they're if they're spawning or or have paired up and are breeding. They'll, they'll make pits and things like that, but, but the amount of, of sand that uh, <laughs> substrate that gets moved by South American fish is uh, like mind boggling to me. And uh, in my case, I'm, I'm seeing it uh, to a tremendous degree with the, uh, with the, the Vieja Zonatus. You, you can see right here in the, in the aquarium, he completely redecorates the aquarium, completely changes it around. And uh, you know, any hope of having a stable uh, set sort of scape in the aquarium, just forget about it, because if he wants to redecorate, he's gonna decorate, redecorate a major way. And um, uh, you can see what he's done here. I mean, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> the other thing that kind of uh, surprised me is I had, for some reason I had in my mind an idea that uh, the South and Central American cichlids were not as, as aggressive and uh, uh, as, as, as these types of fish here that I've been keeping. I thought I, I had pretty much kind of like apex aggressive fish with my African cichlids. And lo and behold, no, the, the, uh, the Central and South American uh, cichlids can be very, very aggressive and, and really beat each other up uh, very badly where I've had to remove fish and let them recover in a tank and, uh, and kind of heal up uh, just like I would do with, with African cichlids and I found it to be uh, the case primarily uh, between members of their own kind, like like vieja beating up a vieja or uh, a Nicaragua going after another Nicaraguan cichlid, uh, geophagus going after other uh, geophagus of the same kind, in particular the Surrey Menensis. So uh, there is no lack of aggression, and there's no big, uh, there's no huge difference in aggression. They they can be just as aggressive as the African cichlids, in some cases even more so. And that was a bit of a surprise. The other thing that, that uh, for me has been a very pleasant surprise has been the, uh, uh, the, the look of, of females. Whereas with African cichlids, uh, I think 99% of them, the females are drab. They're drab and they're gray. Uh, with some of these South and Central American cichlids, the females can be even prettier, even prettier than, than the males. And uh, so now that I'm learning that, I have to be a little bit more, I can't just go to the shop, the, the aquarium shop and say, pick one out for me. I mean, if, if, in the case of the um, uh, Salvini, uh, it was just sort of the luck of the draw. And then afterwards I was doing some more reading on them and I discovered that they have uh, that, that little spot at the bottom of, of the gills and a little bit uh, redder belly, and they can be a, uh, just a bit prettier. And, and the same thing, I think, with the with the Jack Dempseys. I think the female Jack Dempseys can also be a prettier fish uh, you know, than the males. I mean, they're both they're both beautiful, uh, but in, in, and uh, certainly in the case of the Nicaragua cichlids, uh, the, the the female the female in in my mind uh, has uh, has a much much more vibrant color, whereas the male is a bit uh, has a beautiful pattern and a beautiful overall color, but doesn't have the, 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 the pop that the female has. And so uh, th that is, is, a, is a big change, a big surprise for somebody who is accustomed to, to keeping African cichlids where whenever you buy them, you know, you're, you're either uh, making sure you're, you're buying a male or you're, you're buying several in the hope that there's a male in there. Whereas with these South and Central Americans, uh, that's not the case very often. The, the female can be actually the more beautiful. So uh, at any rate, it, it, it is a learning process and 
And another thing that's, that's coming to light for me, and, and certainly you comment on this at the bottom of the video, in the comments below, if you have some information or, or ideas about this, but uh, something that's becoming more and more uh, real to me, just like with, with African cichlids, I, I reached a point where I, where I separated out Mabuna. I didn't want to. You know, I found that they didn't really mix that well with the peacocks and haps, so I ended up uh, choosing to go the route of peacocks and haps and not keeping Mabuna. I'm starting to discover that that these different regions with the South and Central Americans uh, cichlids may have something to do with how well they can actually coexist in the aquarium. Uh, for example, your your you know your your, your South American versus your Central American uh, should, in some cases, not be kept together because they're not, they're not going to get along. And, um, and over time, I'm gonna have to separate out fish. My, my Severums and my Geos will probably end up in one tank, whereas Viejas, Nicaraguas, uh, Jack Dempsey's, Green Tears, fish like that will end up in the 300 where there's a lot more, a lot more real estate and, and uh, a, a swim room. So it, it's definitely a, a learning process. It, it's not uh, one of those, well, that's a, that's a South or Central American cichlid. Throw them in the same tank, they'll all get along. And that's, that's not how it works. So you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm always saying always be learning. And I'm certainly going through that process right now with these, with these fish. So um, thank you for going along on the journey with me and uh, your, your help and advice for those of you who keep South and Central American cichlids has really, really uh, been helpful for me. And I thank you for that. And uh, let's keep moving along. And eventually we'll have, uh, I, I suspect we'll probably have the 90 gallon, uh, the 90 gallon will be a, um, you know, the more, the more docile, you know, you, you'll have your serums in there, uh, your geos, uh, fish like that, maybe even your electric blue caras. And, and then we'll, we'll have the, the 300 for your, for your viejas, uh, your, your Nicaragua, green tares and, and uh, uh, maybe Salvini will be in there, you know, fish like that that have a more of an attitude. But even that will probably get fine-tuned as I start to work more with the regions they come from, things of that nature. And I'm definitely gonna work on not keeping uh, fish that can pair up because they definitely uh, turn up the aggression. And I, I, that's, that's the case also with African cichlids to some degree. They turn up the aggression if there's gonna be any any mating, any spawning going on, they definitely, uh, they definitely turn it up. So something I'm, I'm definitely gonna, gonna keep an eye on and be more aware of. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to uh, uh, hit that, 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 that subscribe and, and the, uh, the thumbs up, the bell and the thumbs up if you haven't already done so, it really helps the channel. And uh, hope to see you on Saturdays for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream, even though this coming Saturday, there will not be a live stream. I'm, I'm going to try and do a live stream during the week, possibly on Wednesday. Okay, thank you, my friends, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.